Gene Deal, My World of Bodyguard and a Hip Hop Star. Get it now on Amazon. Hear what really happened from someone that was really there. Former head of security for Bad Boy Entertainment, Gene Deal. The nigga Puff came out and he grabbed my arm. Yo, Gene, Gene, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. I say, pray for what? That nigga's dead. And walked out the hospital. The Memoirs of the Bodyguard by Gene Deal. My world of bodyguard and a hip hop star. Get it now on Amazon. It's a natural reaction. They start mixing the facts in. They put their story with your story. Like that's really what happened. Women from buddies, fellas. Fellas from buddies, women. It's a trait that's passed down from old heads right now to their children. Like you, you were saying something about French Montana became M -M. I, I was MG. All right, so if you look at, just for your own, if people want to go, you know, you look at the first um, song I guess he ever put out. His first video he ever put out is called Death Around the Corner and it got Cy Cash on it. So the the hook go, I see Death Around the Corner, nigga, I'm MMG, mm -hmm. till the day I die, some shit like that. So um, he's saying, he doing his thing on, and shit, that was his first video, but I was locked up. So Castro used to fuck with him and Max B, do songs with him, he got mad songs with him. He was crushing them at the time, because nobody was on Castro level, that's like my other half when it came to music at that time. And when I come home, I'm more looked at as, I'm not looked at as a rapper like these dudes, because now I'm not a teen no more. When I was a teenager, they was looking at me rapping. Now it's like, I done doing time, I done doing crime and shit. So, Basically, I'm already being worshipped like a, like a legacy already. So I didn't notice when I come home. I mean, I knew who I am, but in general, when I come home, the nigga French is claiming the MMG shit with the catchers. I'm like, I never even met this dude. Who is it? And he's on a little bit. He get, he's starting this little um, Coast Kane DVD shit. You know what? K told me he never thought French was going to make it. I, nobody could have thought he would have made it. I'm I just thought, telling you. I thought. I'm going to tell you. He said that. You want me to tell you his life? I'm telling well, you. If it wasn't Jersey. for me, listen. Huh? If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have made it. And I'm going to tell you right now. Now, I'm just gonna, let's, this is a crazy story, but I could think I could tell this, but he know. Now, they're going to put All right, so, boy, it's the same shit. So, the MMG song, right, that I'm talking about. So, he puts the song out on Cocaine DVD without Castro on it. So he trying to say, so he wanted to be like, because Cash already had got lost the battle in front of Jay Mills and Puff Daddy had set it up for him to lose. Mm -hmm. So that's why French was trying to fuck with Cash just to get close to Puff. Ben seen, I didn't, I'm just looking at it now because I see the whole picture. So, boom, I come home from the feds. Now I'm like a legend to these niggas at this point. These niggas put me on with French. So everybody I'm running down to see where, see where I could get to. So if you MMG and you, why I haven't seen you, right? They called me, they set him up for failure because now he beefing with Casho. Let me see what Casho did to this nigga. I didn't know this. I'm going to tell you how I, how I learned that, found out. So now it's beef with French. Dudes want to kill French. Dudes that I'm around, I'm talking about straight murder French. So they set this nigga up. The same dude, MMG, the same dude in the same crew? No, MMG is a crew I started, but I'm just saying, dude, because of what he did to Casho, Casho, we blood still. So we got a whole bunch of blood, says everybody. They don't care. But he went on, on the he did the MMG shit with Mad Bloods in it without Castro. So Mad Bloods are feeling some type of way behind him. But they he got a DVD that's working, so people are still paying homage. They're gonna treat you, better, but they're gonna talk about you until something happens. You know how this shit works. So dudes call me. He's doing a video on Webster Projects, mm -hmm. right in my hood, while he's out there. So this is how I meet French Montana when I came mm -hmm. home. From the feds, first time. So I'm, 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 I meet the nigga. They telling me they gonna clip the, the dudes that I got. I ain't gonna put the name, but because they, they called me up, they just wanted me to see it. So I walk up to, to the car where he at. Boom. I'm like, yo, you know who I am? He was just like in a. This is my first view. He like, he was just like in a. He, he kind of looked like happy. Nah, like, you, 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 like, you know what I'm saying? Like, real happy. So I'm like, um, I'm like, um, oh, I had, um, I had a big gun in my bag and I had a CD. So I, I pulled out the CD. It had my name on it, guns and all that shit. I'm like, MMG and shit. Like, he's like, oh, guns, don't go put that shit in. Like, he trying to, 
he knew all me. He acted like he knew me real well. I never met this dude at this point. You know? So I'm like, he's like, oh, put this on yo, yo, I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm like, what's up with the MMG shit? Like, you, you claim MMGs, I start like getting straight to the point because I see him trying to. Like, he sees some type of day. I can, you know, you can read the person. He know, like, yeah, I'm guns, but I don't know you. So why are you trying to be so friendly right now? Like, like nah, you no know, Castro. So him and Castro had a, a full blown relationship when I was in the Fed. So I didn't understand really why he was doing this shit or why it happened because Castro didn't really do the right thing by giving me hit the scoop. So I understand and I just went off of what dudes went. So I catch this dude at that point and dudes just starting to get hostile around me. They're like, yo, just let's pull us out the car. Let's take another. So he's like, yo, hold up, what, what it is? I'm like, nah, nah, I, I, I tell niggas off. I show them I'm in control. Like, I'm like, what's up with the MMG shit, the Castro shit? The blood? Cause he getting money too at the time. So dudes want to rob him. They want to do like, that. They, they saying this verbally while I'm talking to them. Like, yo, let me cut the nigga. Let me do this. I'm like, bro, let me just kid him. I'm like, bro, chill. chill. It's, it looked good for the situation, but at the end of the day, these niggas were serious. So I'm like, yo, he, once he realized it was serious, he's like, yo, guns. I don't know him, trust me. He's like, yo, this is what happened. And I'm going to tell you, man, I got love for everybody, but I'm just going to be real. Just to be real. So he told me what really happened and why he did what he did. And he walked out of there. Cause I'm talking about like, it was clipped for him. There's, there's no way, like even if he didn't get clipped and niggas just felt like he would never look the same. He would never made it from that day right there. He knows this. So in general, I tell them, I, I let him tell me this. I say, so if you guys, if you want to tell me if anything could save you right now, I'm giving you a chance to, I'm saying, save yourself, whatever, tell me what's true. And I know the truth. You ain't going to be able to lie to me. He's like, yo, bro, nah, I ain't even like that. He said, he broke down. He was driving in the car with Castro. He was trying to put Castro on. He was doing his, 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 I don't want to put my man down, but it's the truth. This is what saved French Montana, bro. He said, he, they got stopped by police. He said, the nigga, he said, the, um, he had mad weed on him. Mad pounds of weed, you know? He had a big ass chain on shit. So I told you about Castro. So he said the police stopped the nigga, and he tell the nigga, excuse me, he tell the police like, yo, listen, the shit is mine. I'm gonna take the charge. Let the nigga Castro, you know what I'm saying? Take my own, my. He gave Castro his chain or whatever. <laughs> so Castro dead him on his chain. He gets out. So they had an issue. I didn't understand. He never put, tell me nothing. Like none of this stuff. Only thing reason he saved him because Castro, when we was young, I had went to j jail. That shine shit. Remember that shit I said the shine shit. The nigga Castro stole my chain that I left out in the crib. Mm -hmm. So because I knew this was when he was young and he was a thief. That he had rob you, he had steal from you. Think this cash <laughs> was back in the days. He didn't got everybody. He got Stevie J for that six thousand. He got to, this was kind of what blackballed us too. This little cash to doing bullshit. Puff already put him under the black one, then they just ran with him. So long story short, when he told me that, I thought about when Castro did that to me, and that's my man. And I, I was like, nah, I let the nigga go. I'm like, nah, he good. Oh, so he had, uh, Castro had clipped him for his yeah, chain. Yeah, clipped him for his chain. Just like he did. Me, man. He was was kid. Day, so when we was that was that so. nigga M.O. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like, oh. You couldn't have been lying. Like, I right. thought it, like, it was, he was trying to save his life, but it was like, bro, he don't know me. And he said this, and I'm like, man, that is casual. This is casual, too. casual used to rob you. When he was a teenager, that, that's what he did, bro. He didn't know. He still sneak thief, rob, all that shit. So I ain't like that about him, but whatever. It's family. And in general, that's, that's saved French. And he know it. And after that, me and French developed a little relationship, but then I, like, I kind of got overbearing on the nigga, like, Start screaming, you know, you know, they get rich, niggas. <laughs> like, oh, you can't right. do that to me now. Right. So I used to run that, you know. Yeah, man, but the situation is this, is that these guys, I know, and I used to see how they have people that was from the street around them, and some of those guys wasn't musically inclined to make it. But what happens is, is that, the ones who are musically inclined, they don't let them make it because they outdo them. That's a fact. You understand what I'm saying? That's a fact. You know, how if you thorough from the streets, you 
the real deal. <laughs> and you, you what's, you what's up? Once I get there, if I'm there, and then you get there, you gonna outshine me because your shit is authentic and people gonna feel your shit. That's been my life story. <laughs> So I, I look at it as to be a ghostwriter, even if it's by example. I don't got to write it for you. I could just, my life, you could hear about me, you start writing about it. And I listen to the dudes. I don't want to blow up a lot of people because people will feel some type of way, but a lot of people was telling my story in their music and in their films. Mm-hmm. And I know dudes. I'm going to tell this one dude, dude, because I got to expose this dude. Because I don't like to expose these industry dudes because I know so many of these people, right? But the nigga, remember that ghost? Shit, whatever. Uh-huh. So Tommy got a brother named Alvin. Uh-huh. Um, these are white dudes, boys, but you know, I got love for them too. But I'm supposed to. So I meet the dude, and he, I don't know, like dudes be setting me up. Dudes be knowing me. Like I be there. A lot of people know me. So they they'll send somebody who don't know me and be the one orchestrating the whole situation. So I learned that that day. So the dude brings me. He want to interview me about my life story. Blah blah. blah. He takes the camera, sits there, goes over mad stuff. Ooh, this is Tommy, brother. But I don't even know this shit. I go, I look around. It's Tommy looking, peeking in. People, he see me looking, do some old. You know how, like, like you don't want me to see you look. Bro, that shit made me upset. Like, what, what, what's this? You know what I'm saying? So, long story short, I let this shit slide. I'm going to see if I can fuck around and get in with these dudes. Because that is something you know what I'm talking about. Bro, I see dudes just writing shit. From it. And that's some light shit, but a lot of people done did me like that. And but he just did it direct. You know, he came, made me, took, wrote a whole thing up about me. And um, I never really made all these promises on and nothing ain't happened. And then I see shit happening and I see, you know what I'm saying? See crazy. little films. Yeah, little I see little them. shit that I don't want to yeah. speak on, that I spoke it, on. It, it's always going to be like that, man. But see... Like you just said, a lot of these guys are getting exposed and people are bringing up, you know. See, what happens is that if they continuously say, oh, if you do that, you a snitch. If you do that, you snitch and stuff like that. And if it's legal and it's paperwork and, it, and, and, and you did it to get where you at, but if I do it because you use my shit to get where you at, then I'm a snitch. That shit don't make no sense. Yeah, because it's not designed. But that's, o- that's only in our culture, though. Yeah, it's, that's only I, in our, our culture. Our culture is designed to be the down culture. We the burden bearers of society. So, of course, they're going to program us that murder means love. Right. <laughs> love yeah. This shit is crazy. Check it out. You used to ask me, yo, Gene, why you be wearing that big chain and you be bodyguarding and shit like that? Because if I had to shoot this motherfucker for trying to rob us, you're not going to go to court and say, yeah, he was trying to rob us. That's a fact. So he was trying to rob me. That's a fact. You understand? Because you can't go in there and say, because you're a rapper, mm-hmm. and if you say, yeah, he was trying to rob me, then you gonna consider, they're going to consider you a snitch. Mm-hmm. You understand? How the fuck is that? And this nigga was trying to rob us. That's a you fact. can't even say it. That's real. Because so, you got to think about who's saying these things. These are people, anybody that speaks on stuff that is only two to three categories you can put them in. As even somebody who's never actually experienced these circumstances, so all they have is hearsay, so they, all they believe is hearsay. It's like, that's all they got. It's like, people told them about it, and that's all they know. So they're, they're going to speak on anything that sounds something like that, but they will never have the experience. Like what you're saying, you, you're putting that actual situation. Somebody getting robbed and they're trying to... All right, niggas got to move, and we, we legal, we got a business, so we're going to have to move around police, move around it, and make shit work for us to keep making this work, because this is already something that's working. You know what I'm saying? That snitch shit and that low, that's a low vibrational shit. That's just for some people that don't have nothing legal, don't have nothing in good. They all the way in. You got to respect that game in that world there, because if you get caught there, it's going down, and ain't nobody yeah. going to find out. But, but I understand that. But, like, it's even, it's even to the point right this, if somebody is robbing you, trying to take something from you. Then I shoot that person, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And say you shot they him. come to you and say, was he trying to rob you? You can't even say it because some doctrine or doctrination of 
you being a snitcher, you being a rapper, you can't say this nigga. Yeah, he was trying to rob me. Nigga, you cannot say that because think about it. A rapper is a snitch. What rapper is not snitching? Every rapper you hear, is they telling on the game. If they're not telling on somebody, they tell on. Yeah, but when it comes to the court of law. Yeah, but, but they're using the raps in the court of law now. Right, I so understand that. <laughs> if you rapping about your man, look, how many <laughs> niggas is going down? My man got these bodies. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, rap, niggas need to understand, anybody who's speaking, all right, a news reporter, what is he doing? He's snitching. What the fuck is he doing? A plot post. All the, what are we doing? We're telling on something. We're telling about something, bro. So a nigga got to start paying attention. He talking about court of law. All right, it's a whole different ball game. But if you go to t- attack somebody that's have a legal business, legal system, I don't care if they're gangsters, whatever, they're going to protect that legal business with what protects it, which is the law. The law. Right. So it's, it's like if you don't, people be wanting something to happen that's impossible. People don't deal with common sense ain't common. You know that. Right. So there's people just going to move and then they're like, all right, well, I, I know all my people believe this and I'm going to use this knowledge for my people but then you got a bigger world out there that people not seeing right. so if you're speaking for the hood of course the hood i'm gonna see it like that but i've been so many places now that i can i see it for the whole thing bro i'm not i got dudes that got legal business i got brought police bloods that was under me niggas that's in big you know, i got people in power and position and that work for me in all types of levels. I got police on my payroll, how, how you want to say. So it's a, it's a whole different. When I seen Puff and my big brother's Wolf, all these niggas doing this shit, I was a teenager. I grew up to actually understand why and be able to utilize the, the, the power. And that's what it is. They don't want you. They want you to be silenced. When you, when you got a voice, you got a voice. You can't right. be silenced. Right. So it's like, <laughs> right. it is what it is. So that's what comes with the territory if you're going to have a voice. Like, and I had to make that up in my mind because I was never really, that's the reason why I really was a rapper for so long and never really tried to really push it or be on because, or even do something like this. I always felt like that, but now I realize. Well, my thing about it is, is that, you know, I appreciate that you doing me a solid coming out because I know you ain't want to do this. You understand what I'm saying? But I thought people needed to know and people need to see that the transformation and where shit comes from. Like, you you a kid, you understand, you get thrown into the system, you understand, you become one of the biggest bloods in the Bronx, you got all these people under you, representing you, you come to the music industry, you understand, you doing dirty work for people, you understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? For they can get a certain status. For them. They, exactly. For they can put pressure on somebody else. Well, listen here. Yo, I can get that man off you. You know what I'm saying? I can stop this and this like that. He ain't going to do it no more. You know what I'm saying? You know, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what they use it for. That's a fact. You understand? That's what they use it for. You know, you go at Jay. You understand? So Jay wonder why you coming at him. And then they say, don't worry about it. I'll handle it. You understand? Not knowing they the one who put you on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the game works. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm realizing as I get older, yeah. I'm starting to see, like, yeah. oh, why? You understand what I'm saying? So now, my whole thing about it is this, is that people need to know that that type of life existed. You understand? But now your transformation and becoming a spiritual leader, your transformation is becoming a... a, a, a Somebody that's instrumental in the community are going back and saying, yo, all that you want to be a blood, all that that you want to do this, you all you want to do that. No, bro, get you some kind of trade, some kind of education, do you something that's going to help you in the long run so you don't give these people your time that's a like fact. I gave them. That's a fact. You understand? That's a big fact. You understand? All that throwing bricks at the penitentiary. They don't throw them back. <laughs> they just give you time. <laughs> That's a you fact. know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's a big fact. So anything else you want to go into, man? I mean, basically, um, I was going to break down the situation. I, did I speak on the touch shit and all that? What? The touch shit when touch, like, the news is shot parking on. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about that. I you mean. Know, you know, like, like it, it, it's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, you was locked up with Tut. Yeah, right? I was locked up with Tut in the fist. Right. And 
that's what remind you said Haitian Jack. All the niggas was there at that time. Kenneth Cream at the time. Gotti Jr. Peter Gotti. I was even in 10 South with Peter Gotti. And that's the box inside the box. That's where they got El Chapo. I could break down all these shits. The people that I passed through just in that fair situation is the Bernie Madoffs. He a funny dude, man. Bernie Madoff, as soon as he come through, he be like, where's my money? Who owes me money? Yeah, that's what you know. You know, though, that's Bernie. Like, just the character. I met some of the most powerful people in, in, in the world, bro. And, I mean, gangsters. I even crossed paths with El Chapo before I came home and shit. They ain't want to let nobody see him. It's over me. I'm like, I'm, yo, chop over there. <laughs> you know what I'm but long story short, yeah, the reason why I be beating these cases and I want, I want, I just want to give another shout to another dead big homie, rest in power, Johnny Cochran. On that that trick, tr- right. he gave me a secret to understanding the law, and I and I utilize it, and I just, you know, basically. My lifestyle in that game, I want to use it to help. That's all, big bro. So I put it in your hands. You can go over a lot more. I, I, it's up to you, but so far, so good. You know what I'm saying? I, I know you ain't, you're not going to do this, man. And you know, like, uh, I think you should have your own platform, man. You know, give people spiritual guidance. I, I, you give people, you know, a word of advice. You understand what I'm saying? Because you could get deeper than I can on this little hour segment that we have. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. You know, just to get introduced and to introduce yourself, man, you know. And you could play your old music. You know, you, you, it's a lot of stuff that you could do to, to give to these young cats, man. Cause your name ring bells in everywhere. That's a fact. You understand what I'm saying? I'm the only fed. I mean, I walked the feds with Clark Wallabies, the worst prisons in the world. And dudes say, they, bro, that I, I just see how the world treats me. It's not just. It's bigger than me. How I feel. It's like everywhere I go, I this energy be on me, and it's like I'm dominant in every area. Like, like I said, to be able to walk. Bro, I walk the worst fed pens with clog wallabies on front of the streets, bro. It's just impossible. It's just unheard of. And they all respected it. <laughs> and it's like, like I said, I crossed paths with all the biggest homies. And um, that jail shit is not, shit is, it's not fun, bro. <laughs> it's, 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 it's for the birds, so. If you could do something positive, I know a lot of gangsters that come up here and they talk about, oh, Go we'll catch these bodies, do this rap shit, sell these bricks, do this bricks, and how tough they was when they did it. Believe me, if I was to really speak and tell these stories that I could tell, I probably y'all would probably look at me like these dudes be trying to be look like, but that's not the look I want. Basically, I want the look as you know, what I'm saying I went through it as like, like a sacrifice to have the experience and knowledge to know what not to do. So now if the dudes that's coming up that want to be better than what I was, that's the people that I could talk to. If you want to be like me, you just listen to what the fuck they said I was doing and and try to do that. But if you want to be better than me, I got a program. I got some knowledge. I I, I ordained as as a minister under the Universal Life Church. So I have like a spiritual aspect over the religious aspect aspect that most people utilize but it's a way to find yourself you know what i'm saying and that's what all religions or spirituality should be a path to find you and you have to go within because everything in the world is without and as within comes without so i got something to put in so when you come out you, you're gonna be better than me that's, that's how i'm gonna leave and you don't have to go through that road that he went through Please. See, what happened is, is that a lot of these guys, you know, uh, they don't tell you that they roll. They try to tell you that they don't want you to go through that road, but they don't tell you how to stay away from that road. You understand? And you, it has to come within. 
you have to say to yourself that, yo, I don't want to. I may want some of the things that this person have, but I'm not going to do the things that he may do to get it. You understand what I'm saying? Because some guys are going, yo, listen here. Yo, I want a new car, man. I'm going to go rob this bank. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, oh, I'm going to go stick somebody up. You understand? Oh, I'm going to go sell his drugs and stuff like that. Now, you got to say to yourself, man, listen to me. I want the same shit, but I'm not going to do that. What about the dude who never did that and got the same shit? Did he, did, did, he, did, he, did he put two nickels together and made a dime? Right. You know what? You got to look at the world we live in, man. <laughs> it's just crazy to even. You got to know how to separate your wants from your needs. Yeah. Brother. You understand? Does it. Does it make you happy because you rich from the things that you happy with or are you rich because of things that you can get? If you happy with the shit you got, you already rich. I'm content, but I'm, I'm, I look at it like this. I want to make everybody content, so I'm not happy. I'm just content enough to make everybody happy content enough to make others content meaning i could deal with what i got and make more so other people can have at least what i got or what they need you know what i'm saying i understand what you're saying but i'm i'm so old right now man i i I ain't worrying about the next motherfucking what they got or what they can't get i done raised i put my last baby through college yesterday she graduated from Rutgers. god you know that biology and animal science, I'm, you know, I'm, that's big. Listen here, bro. That's big. That's what it's about. That's yeah. that's that's the good news of the day, man. That's you, you know what I'm saying. The, so I'm big. like, I'm on, so I'm on, I'm on a whole nother level right now. You know, I said to myself that I was gonna give myself five years after I retired. See, can I make myself rich? Mm-hmm. But I was already rich. That's a big fact. Within. I was already rich. That's a big fact. Big fat. I'm happy with what I got. I don't. I don't. I don't need another piece of clothing. I don't need another piece of jewelry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't need another car. None of that shit like that. I need God to let me keep breathing his air. That's a fact. And be happy. And see, can I put a smile on somebody else's face? Another day above ground, man. I put a smile on me every day, man. And all of every friend I had since three murdered. Not even everyone was murdered, but. Majority of them murdered. Over majority is about two, three, maybe five out of thirty-three. That's left around. Man, and it's what it is. But I, if you don't want that life, man, don't live this gangster, this gang life, because this shit is not real, bro. I mean, if you got a real brother, that's real. I, I could be whatever gang. As long as y'all both gonna rep that shit, that's real. But if you think you gonna have 20, 30 dudes with that same feeling, that's where you go wrong at. So, you know, you play the game and know who's who. And when you find one of them pieces, take care of that piece, boy. That piece gonna take care of you. That's that's the advice I could give you because this is like chess, man. And, and it's a thinkers game. Pawns get sacrificed. Kings get overthrown. Can't make your horse do what your rook do. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the chessboard, and I always give this analogy, right? It's a big war on the board, but all the pieces, they go in the same box. And it's over. So if you pay attention to how life works, we all won. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we all we all got the same death date. Might be farther away from each other or closer, but we all going to the same place, boy, when it's game over. Wow, you just <laughs> said something that was crazy. I don't know if you even caught that. You said we all go, we all in the sand. I'm going to leave y'all with this one, man. You just said it, and, and it was crazy to me. You said that we all are as one, like the chess piece. And at the end of the day, all go in the same box. So when the game over. Wow.
Game goes. <laughs> My brother. I love Always, you more, man. big bro. You know. Always. I love you Appreciate more, big bro. All right, y'all, man. This has been Big Gene. My man. GF. GF. We're going to leave out that murder guns. Yeah. I you mean, say? unless you fuck with the family. Uh, <laughs> it's been another one of those last big night segments. Big Gene. Deuces. It's a natural reaction. They start mixing the facts in. They put their story with your story. Like that's really what happened. Women from buddies, fellas. Fellas from buddies, women. It's a trait that's passed down from old heads right now to they children. Gene Deal, my world of bodyguard and a hip hop star. Get it now on Amazon. Hear what really happened from someone that was really there. Former head of security for Bad Boy Entertainment, Gene Deal. Nigga Puff came out and he grabbed my arm. Yo, Gene, Gene, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. I say, pray for what? That nigga's dead. And walked out the hospital. The memoirs of the bodyguard by Gene Deal. My world of bodyguard and a hip-hop star. Get it now on Amazon.